We're going to start in three, two. Hey, Sunny. So talk to us. Tell me one or a couple thoughts that you have on how we can start dropping PPO insurances or how we can start transitioning slowly but securely out of uh, depending on our PPO insurances. Great question. Great question, Mike. Uh, for, I think the first and foremost is you have to have a very clear vision and mindset of what you want to do. If that's your strategy, if you want to get out of the insurance game or start to cut, let's say, your worst paying insurances, then you have to have that roadmap. And you're the leader, you're the doc, you're the one in the office that should be kind of set in, the, uh, set in that path, right? Mm -hmm. Setting the GPS, the old GPS, right? This is where we're going. Then now you can start to formulate how you're going to do it. So, you know, I host the fee for service podcast and I've interviewed a ton of docs who have done exactly that. And they've all done a little different how they transition, but every single one of them was 100% committed. The little joke that I always say is, you know, you know, like ham and eggs, right? You know, there's between ham and eggs mm -hmm. In ham and eggs, right? The chicken's involved, but the pig is committed. So you got to be committed. You know what I mean? You can't yeah. be involved. You can't dabble. You can't. And I see this a lot. Hey, can you send me the letter? The letter doesn't mean anything to the insurance company unless you have bought into why you're going to do it. And ultimately, what I found successful with, with all these people that have done it well is you got to get you got to get in front of your team, explain it, get them fully on board, and then you got to get behind them and let them run with it. But they've got to be fully invested. They've got to be pigs. They can't be chickens. They've got to be fully committed to it. And it's not easy because you're going to find like Chad Johnson talks about, you're going to find that patient who you thought loved you, seen you forever. And the moment you change, they'll leave you for five cents to go down the street. And that, that's a shot to the ego. But if you're committed to what you're doing and why it's better for your patients, for your team, for yourself, for your ethics, for your sanity, then you go ahead and do it. But you stay committed to it. And I think the reinforcing of that is so important along the lines of, okay, Let's talk about what we're doing. Well, if you've got a situation where one insurance, which I know just recently dropped their fees 30%, you can't function if you're a 70% overhead office at a 30% fee reduction. You can't. You're now losing money. And God help you if the patient doesn't show up, you're now paying the insurance company to accept lesser rates. Or on the other hand, you're overcharging your other patients who are footing the bill for the difference. And with the change in the cost and the PPE and all the other things that we've been hit with. And, and now labor has gone up dramatically because everybody, hygienist, assistants, everybody can make a ton more working for the guy or the gal down the street. Mm -hmm. Everybody's hearing that everybody's getting, you know, their, their team is approaching them and, and you got to have an answer and you got to be current. Now we just looked at our current, you know, salary rates and our current salary rates in our geographic area have gone up almost 20% in our workspace category. We've got to keep pace. We've got to stay a little bit ahead of it, but we got to at least keep pace. And that's something we forget, but that's a part of cost of doing business. So the cost of doing business is rising and the reimbursements are lowering. It's, there's a breaking point, tipping point at some point in time. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to compromise your ethics, which I hope no one does, then the strategy really has to be being paid fairly for quality and for, for ethical dentistry. So I think the strategy, number one, let's go back. You've got to be committed to what you're doing. You've got to have the right mindset. You got to get your team on board. You got to teach them the verbal skills or the cues. I'm not a big guy on scripting, but I am a big guy on bullet points. Because when you talk, Michael, you have a certain vernacular. When I talk, I have a certain vernacular. I want it to come from my heart and soul. Mm -hmm. So when that patient, that that tough patient that has you like my, my, my image, they get you pinned against the back wall. How come your crown fee is so high? You have an answer that comes right from your gut. It's not rehearsed. It's not staged. It's what you believe in, right? Mm -hmm. How do you find out how long, how strong the, the roots are? It's when the wind blows, right? So you've got to get that from your teeth. A lot of people like the term unrestricted provider. I happen to love it. I think it's great. I think the terms insurance companies use are always going to knock the dentist like the backhand compliment. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and put down you and promote them because they're selling. Oh, listen, this is a preferred provider. Michael, would you rather go to a preferred provider or for some guy who's not preferred? He's just some <laughs> average Joe or Jill, right? Yeah, yeah. So that says that sets the tone immediately. Well, you're not a preferred provider. No, we're not an office that has accepted the limitations and exclusions that your insurance plan has. Oh, wait a second. Say that again. No, we're not accepting the limitations and exclusions that your plan has. They mm -hmm. don't cover, it used to be like, they don't cover white fillings. You got to have a silver filling. Hmm. Can't have a porcelain crown. It's got to be an all metal crown. We're going for the least expensive or cheapest option. It's not in your best interest in certain situations and you don't have the freedom to choose. So if I'm a preferred provider, that means all, all that means is I've agreed to accept their fee and their treatment plan. Mm -hmm. So now it's not a patient doctor relationship. It's a patient insurance carrier doctor. You've got a, you've got an intermediary and that person, you know, they're not in your favor. Have you ever had to file an insurance claim for anything for your house or your car or anything? Yeah. And what's yeah. that like? You've got to fight to get what you've been paying for. Yeah, it's absurd. I mean, we had a, a claim at, a, at our house and a, a water, a toilet leaked on the third floor. And we have full coverage, full replacement, the best, blah, 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 blah. They came in at a figure that was about a third of what it ended up being. Mm -hmm. I had an independent adjuster. I had this. We put this for it. And, and remember, the cost of materials and labor was was going way up. So that changed the, the, changed the numbers. They don't care. Oh, no, no, we're going to do this. No, you, you got to put it back to the original condition. And it took a battle. And my wife was doing that almost 24 seven for, you know, for months. Because we just can't settle for getting shafted. Most mm -hmm. people are not going to do that. They're just going to quit and give up and say, I surrender. I'll take whatever you can. It's better than nothing. And who wins? The insurance company wins. Not you, you, the customer who's paying the bills and paying the premiums and paying for those high rise buildings and those great CEO salaries. You're paying it, but you ain't getting what you're supposed to get. So that's insurance. That's how insurance companies work. That's why they have the biggest buildings. That's why they make a ton of money, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So then we want to be 100% fully committed. And yep. then from that point on, not so much have scripts, but be prepared with bullet points so we can speak yeah. from our gut on what to say. And then, it, I mean, what would we do, Sonny? Let's just say we're like, we want to start out because I know you started out as fee for service, right? But like, what would we do if we want to start out and we're going so slow and it's like, it's like we're not even breaking even. We're starting to break uh, to the point where we're like, I think I'm just going to give up and start taking some insurance. It's like something because I got to do this. I got to, I got to make a living. What's well, now you got to make sure your marketing is ahead of your of your curve. And Josh Bernstein talks about this all the time. It was a big mistake he made. He just cut it right away. Boom, it, it plummeted. He didn't have any marketing strategies in place to cultivate that part of his practice or what became his desired practice. You have to you have to go out there and you have to you know find that, and then you have to go go market towards it. So let's say let's say you're the greatest implant dentist on the planet. Well. Does anybody know about you? Does anybody know what implant does? Have you, have you been in the community? Um, how have you reached those patients who are in the, in the market and thinking about an implant? You know, um, nowadays with digital and social media and Google and Yelp and all these other things, I mean, you have a lot of different avenues to try to um, put your name and your expertise or your niche in front of those people who might be looking for that specifically. Now that's target marketing. And that's, I think, probably one of the more successful ways to do it. But you have to make sure that your marketing is out there and you're bringing in those patients. And then those patients that come in, you take care of them like they are gold. You, there's not enough that you can't do for that person. And those people will refer other people. So take great care of those that you have. So let's say you do this and you decide one day you're going cold turkey, you got no marketing and you lose 50% of your practice. Well, that other 50% of your practice, you better make sure that you show them the appreciation, the love, the warmth, everything, you know, in your, in your arsenal that you can, that's sincere to help them build your practice back with patients just like them. Gotcha. So like, basically you want to like roll out the red carpet for them. Right. And, and let them know like, Hey man, we love you pretty much. Yeah. I mean, how many, how many docs here pick up the phone every night and call every single patient that they saw that day that got an injection? 
or every patient they saw in hygiene. It was great. I'm glad you got your cleaning, you know, blah, 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 blah. And discuss with them even, it's just an opportunity to reach out to them. I mean, I had a colonoscopy and I never met my doctor. I never met the doctor. I saw the physician's assistant. I went under, I saw someone in anesthesia. I wake up, they talk to my wife. I never saw him. I had to go back for a consult. And I, I literally, when I met him, I was like, oh, oh your doctor should make Oh, nice to meet you, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so that's, that's, a, that's an invasive procedure. You got a tooth filled and your doctor called you. You know, you got an eight-year-old in the chair. You did a filling on you call. Hey, I want to talk to Sally. Oh, this is Mrs. Oh, thank, hi, Miss Jones. Great seeing you. Let me talk to Sally. You want to talk to Sally? Yeah, I want to talk to Sally. Oh, my God. Sally. Hi. You know, and they can't speak, you know, whatever it is. But you're showing, you're calling because you care. And you, it's got, again, it's got to be part of your DNA. You're not doing it. You're not reading a script. You're not saying, how, how are you doing? Everything good. Okay, nice. Click. Like, hey, Sal, it was fun seeing you today. How's, you know, I remember you said something about your, your phys ed class. How was that today? Good. Great. How's it? Everything going well with the tooth? Did you have to take any time on out? No. Wonderful. Super. Go ahead and eat on that. Enjoy everything you want. Great seeing you. Can't wait to see you again. Boom. Yeah. That's building your practice. Yeah. You know, I like that. and mom, yeah. don't worry when mom's going down to get her coffee at Starbucks and she's like, you know, who just called my office. Dr. Arias, man, he called for Sally. She had a filling. I had a colonoscopy. I didn't hear from my doctor. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's 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 really um, that's just a personal touch that I think anybody could do. Yeah. One last question I want to ask you, Sonny, is how do you get your team on board with all this? So, for like, like give you an example is like, let's just say you mm -hmm. decided you made the commitment, you're dropping insurance, then your front mm -hmm. office is like. Look, doc, we're not busy. And the, you know, the doctor goes up. Why? Why does my schedule have holes? Why is it right? We're not busy because we dropped insurances. And they keep using that excuse, right? Like, how do we get our team 100% fully committed to this? Well, you got to monitor, and you got to train, and you got to train, you got to train, and then you got to follow through and follow through, follow through. Because honestly, let's say I'm at your, I'm working your front desk, and I see Mrs. Jones, who's my neighbor for years, and Mrs. Jones, we've accepted her insurance. Mm -hmm. Now I have to tell Mrs. Jones we don't accept her insurance, and if I don't believe in it. If I'm not a pig, if I'm a chicken and I'm not committed. Well, we dropped your insurance. We can't, you know, I'm not going to be able to see you instead of saying, you know what? We made it. We made a decision. that's going to be better for you. And here's what, here's what we're doing. Here's why we're doing it. Can't wait to see you. See you Tuesday. That's committed. The other one is see you later. So if I do that, number one, I'm sabotaging the whole deal. But number two, I'm reinforcing my internal belief, which says, I don't think this is a smart thing to do. Mm -hmm. So you've got to find out who's rowing with you, who's not rowing at all, and God forbid, who's rowing in the other direction, because you've got to be one sound team, and that that'll kill you. But it's got to be a you know an even front. So how do you do it? You got to train. You got to train. Role playing. I can't reinforce how important role. Play. Nobody likes to do it. It's uncomfortable. Man, it's a lot easier to be uncomfortable with someone in your office. And someone that's calling on the phone that they may not have ever talked to before. Hmm. And they got to develop. They got to work through those, those little things. And, and some people are good at it. And some people stink at it. But the more they practice it, they can all get adequate and then good at it. But it's, yeah. it's a process. And they always are comparing themselves to everybody else. And you're in the back of the office. You're not in the front office. You're not sitting there. Now, you might be able to record lines. That's helpful and, and, and helpful for training. Not helpful for criticizing, but helpful for training and coaching. If you're truly a coach, you want that person at their highest level. You want them at their peak performance. That's what a coach does, right? Gets them to the next level, right? So mm -hmm. that's what it has to be understood. This is where we're going. And, and you might have a superstar rock star on your team. Make her help train the others. You know, her, I'm sorry, her or him, whoever it might be, have them help train the other team. Yeah. Man, so this can be like, you might have to let some people go, right, from your team. You might, you might, and I, I would not be shocked because you got to find out. And, it, and the only way to find out is, is you have to monitor it and you've got to have your you nose, know, so your ear to the ground. You got to see what's going on and, mm -hmm. and actually what's said and the tone it's said. So if you're recording the phone calls, you know, you take, for example, you know, how do you answer a phone? Hello, this is, uh, this is Joe's Dental. Hey, good morning. This is Joe's Dental. How you doing? Same, same scenario. One's inviting. One's like, Oh shit, it's dark in here. You know? <laughs> yeah. And, and they completely different messages, right? Same mm -hmm. vernacular, different usage. So you've got to find 
that not everybody's on top of their game all the time, but you do want a consistency in what the people hear from your front office awesome. or whoever's answering the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, Sonny. I appreciate your time. And if anyone has further questions, you can definitely find him on uh, his Facebook group, the fee for service Facebook group or the Dental marketer society Facebook group, or where can they reach out to you directly? Oh, I'm, you know, I'm on Facebook, Sonny Spira. You, my Gmail is really complicated. Sonny Spira at gmail.com. Um, my office is progressive dental. So it's Dr. Spira at progressive dental ny.com. Um, you know, I'm out there. You can find me. I, I'm not going anywhere. I'm nothing special. <laughs> nice. Man. Okay. All right. Thank you, Sonny, for being with me on this Monday morning marketing episode. My pleasure. Great. Thanks for having me.